my folks. I'm going to walk back with cutting through the matrix and before I take the collars, and there's already collars there, I'm going to read a bit from Advertising Age. Advertising Age, you can look it up yourself. December 11th, 2007 issue. And I talked about this some time ago, and how Voice to Skull would come and first be used for advertising. And here it is. It says, Hear voices, it might be an ad. An A and E billboard whispers a spooky message audible only in your head and pushed to promote its new paranormal program by Andrew Hamp. Published December the 10th, 2007. New York. It's the adage.com. New Yorker Alison Wilson was walking down Prince Street in Soho last week but she heard a woman's voice right in her ear asking, who's there, who's there? She looked around to find no one in her immediate surroundings. Then the voice said, it's not your imagination. No, he's not crazy. Or intrepid reporter Andrew Hamp ventures to Soho to hear for himself the technology that has New Yorkers freaked out and A and E buzzing. No, he's not crazy. And it's just, it repeats that again twice for some reason. Indeed, he's not crazy. It isn't. It's an ad for Paranormal State, a ghost-themed series premiering on A&E this week. The billboard, there's a billboard in the, in the street above the, above the street level. It says, the billboard uses technology manufactured by a holosonic that transmits an audio spotlight from a rooftop speaker so that sound is contained within your cranium. That's your skull. The technology, ideal for museums and libraries. This is your spin to make you accept it. Ideal for museums and libraries or environments that require a quiet atmosphere, probably funerals too. The coffin will speak to you. For isolated audio slideshows, has rarely been used on such a scale before. For random passers-by and residents who have to walk unwittingly through the area where the voice will penetrate their inner peace, it's another story. Miss Wilson a New York-based stylist said she expected the voice inside her head to be some type of creative project. Yeah, sure, I'm sure she thought that. But could see how others might perceive it differently. This is a PR blurb, actually, particularly on a late-night stroll home. I might be a little freaked out, and I wouldn't necessarily think it was coming from a billboard, she said. And here he goes on, less intrusive approach. Joe Pompey, a rather pompous guy, the president and founder of Holosonics, said the creepy approach is key to drawing attention to A&E's show, but he noted the technology was designed to avoid adding to noise pollution. You know, isn't that beautiful of a psychopath? How they can twist something into the reverse and say they're trying to avoid noise pollution by putting thoughts right into your head. Because that's what it amounts to, you see. If you really want to annoy a lot of people, a loudspeaker is the best way to do it, he said. If you set up a loudspeaker on top of a building... Everybody's going to hear that noise. But if you're only directing that sound to a specific viewer, you're never going to hear a neighbor complaint from street vendors or pedestrians. The whole idea is to spare other people. Oh, they're being nice to us. They're being nice to us. Good PR psychopath there. Holosonics had partnered with a cable network once before when Court TV implemented the technology to promote its mystery whisperer in the mystery sections of select bookstores. You see how they do it too? They introduce it gradually in little places like that till you're used to it. This is another article actually getting used to it. Mr. Pompey said the company also has tested retail deployments in grocery stores with Procter & Gamble, all oh, the big ones, and Kraft, the crafty one, for customized audio messaging. So a customer, for example, looking to buy laundry detergent could suddenly hear the sound of gurgling water and dust feel compelled to buy Tide as a result of the sonic experience. Mr. Pompey contends that technology will take time for consumers to get used to. We're going to get trained, folks. We're going to be trained, much like the lights on digital signage and illuminated billboards did when they were first used. Website Gawker posted an item about the billboard last week with the headline, Schizophrenia is a new ad gimmick, and asked how soon will it be until, in addition to the do, do not call list, we'll have a do not beam commercial messages into my head list. There's going to be a certain population sensitive to it, but once people see what it does and hear for themselves, yeah, intrusive thoughts, right? They'll see it's effective for getting attention, Mr. Pompey said. Yeah, it sure will. 
A&E's three million to five million campaign for paranormal includes other more disruptive elements than just the one audio ad in New York. In Los Angeles, a mechanical face creeps out of a billboard as if it's coming towards the viewer and then recedes. In print, the marketing team persuaded two print layers to surrender a full editorial page to their ads, flipping the gossip section in AM New York upside down and turning a page in this week's para- parade into a checkerboard for ads for paranormal. AM New York's gossip page got turned upside down as a promo. So here you are getting trained uh, to accept the next step. Now, don't ever believe for a second uh, that independent companies they just went ahead and did this on their own. Uh, this is backed from the top because this will have a tremendous effect on the culture and on the behavior of the people. Nothing, remember, is allowed to happen. Even Plato said this a long time ago. Nothing happens that would disrupt the culture. Everything has to be approved from the top, especially on something as scale as this. And you'll find these companies and corporations are all interwoven. The biggest corporations are all just sections, sections of your security services, your CIA, MI6, and so on. Real companies, real corporations, but they run the technological side of things. And this is going to be, be made more prevalent. And I've no doubt they'll use it in the school systems to, to calm the students. But as you, as you see yourself, um, technology has been dished out piecemeal. Everything we get today is antique and obsolete. And uh, for instance, Nick Bagage, who basically was the first guy to come up with the harp technology being used in the Americas on the public, uh, was on the CBC here on Wendy Mesley's show a few years ago, showing these little gadgets like the size of a television remote, uh, something you'd put in your pocket, and he had tablefuls of, of these little gadgets, and he said to Wendy, he said, stand 20 feet away, and he pointed it at, at her. She was facing away from him, and she heard music in the middle of her head, and this was a, a technique of, of voice-to-skull technology, very old technology, um, but he said that he could, he could just as easily have put a voice in her head. Now, he said, this is obsolete from the CIA. This technology was from the 1950s. So that tells you, in the 1950s, people were still using the big glass tubes in their TVs and radios. We hadn't had the transistor radio even by then, and the stuff that was in this little handheld had to be solid-state microcircuitry, stuff that we only were given about 10, 15 years ago. So they're so far ahead in levels of science uh, that whatever is, is presented to the public at the bottom level is already obsolete from a war point of view and is safe to be sold to the public.
He said, I won't throw myself away.